I'm watching ESPN live right now without a cable or satellite subscription. This is the first time anybody's been able to do this, and it's thanks to a new service from Dish Network called Sling TV. For 20 bucks a month, you get a handful of channels that you normally would have to pay for a subscription to get, but instead, it streams directly to your mobile device or your computer or a set-top box so you can watch it up on the big screen. Is it really all it's hyped up to be? Let's find out. For the first couple of weeks, if you want to watch on your big screen, you need a Roku 3 set-top box. There will be more devices supported soon, but for now, it's the Roku 3, which is what we have here. Download the Sling app, select it, sign in, and you're watching. Now, for our demonstration, we've actually got access to all of the channels that are available, and that includes some $5 add-on packages. Uh, but you're going to get ESPN, ESPN2, uh, TNT, TBS, HDTV, um, and a handful of others. You can also add some uh, other channels like DIY Network, um, or there's some kids' favorites like uh, Disney Junior, Disney XD, and Boomerang. To view your channels, you can either look at all of them at once, or you can specify a particular category, and that'll show you just the channels in that particular category. Personally, I like to keep it on all channels so I know what all of my options are. And as you scroll through the different channels, you'll actually see on a timeline what's gonna be playing. So I can see here that Seinfeld will start at three on TBS, or if I go over to HGTV, it's Property Brothers all day until about four. Navigating the menu takes a little bit of getting used to. It's not like having cable or satellite, and it's not exactly like having Netflix either. For instance, if I press up or down on the Roku's cursor pad, I can change channels. But I've gotta press the star key and then hit TV to see my different TV stations. Again, it's gonna take a little getting used to. Here's another big difference. If you're used to having a DVR at home where you can rewind, pause, and fast forward live TV, you're not gonna get that on all the stations. In fact, only a couple of them allow it. For instance, TNT, ESPN, and CNN don't allow it. However, if we go visit, say, HGTV, you'll see that I can back it up to the beginning of the episode or pause and then fast forward as necessary. It's also important to note that you can't record anything. Now naturally, you might be wondering about commercials at this point. Most of these stations do show you commercials just as if you were getting it over cable or satellite. The one exception is ESPN, which is currently not sold any of its Sling TV ad space, so this is all you get. In addition to live TV, you can also cruise a selection of video on demand movies. I'm even less in love with the user interface here. It took me a while to figure it out, but you know what? There is quite a bit available. If you scroll down far enough, you'll start getting into movie categories, and there's a bunch of them. Let's take a look at all the action adventure movies here. There's quite a few of them. I mean, it go, the list goes on for a while, and this is just one category. Disney is well represented, but there's also a nice selection of both old and new stuff. Most of it is well rated. You've got a couple of duds in there but this is not bad for a launch. If you decide you do want to rent a movie, it's going to cost you about $3 for the SD version and about $4 for the HD version. And that brings us to perhaps the most critical component, picture quality. The picture quality is definitely not on par with cable or satellite HD, and it's not as good as Netflix's HD programming either. I feel like I'm watching 720p at best, and the bigger the TV, the more obvious the low resolution is. And I'm not just being picky. I mean, if you've got a 65-inch TV like this, it's not going to be great. But then again, it's only 20 bucks. And for those who use this mostly on mobile devices and smaller TVs, it's gonna be just fine. I actually like the experience with the uh, iPad or Android app a little bit better. It seems to be a little bit smoother. The user interface makes more sense to me. This might be a good time to mention that you don't get to watch on more than one device at a time per account. As you'll see here, now that I'm streaming on my iPad, the uh, TV will go inactive. I feel like it's better put together for a touchscreen interface. I can still uh, browse by different categories, but all my menu items are right up top here. I can more easily search without having to go through a few different menu settings. And the video quality is better as well because again, it's more suitable for this size of a screen. 
So now that I've had a chance to really use this service, I realize it's not gonna be for everybody. You need to have a pretty strong internet connection, otherwise you're gonna do a lot of sitting around and waiting for loading and buffering. I also feel like for really big screens that the video quality just isn't there. Also, since you can only stream to one device at a time, this isn't gonna be a good blanket solution for a large family. But for guys like me who have already cut the cord and we're looking for some more options, this is a perfect fit in with Netflix and Hulu and Amazon. But that's what I like about Sling TV. It's a relatively inexpensive add-on for those folks who can't quite divorce cable entirely and still need those few favorite channels like ESPN and Disney. 